Hello everyone, I wanted to share this uh, recent case that I had of an ETEP Stopa in a gentleman with a primary symptomatic umbilical hernia and rectus muscle diastasis, which I thought was pretty straightforward to start out uh, your practice for those who are interested. During this case, I'm going to lay out some of the key aspects of my surgical technique and I hope it's uh, going to encourage some of you to start out your practice. I mark the abdominal landmarks with an ultrasound and then I will act access the left retrorectal space with a standard five millimeter optical port. And I'm gonna do a telescopic dissection until I create enough space for me to place my first five millimeter port on the left iliac fossa. Through this port, I'm going to finish up the dissection of the left retrorectal space, just enough for me to have a, a clear view. And then I'm going to perform a suprapubic crossover uh, in the space of rectus, uh, removing the midline and making sure I see the midline and the right rectus muscle so that I can place what is going to be my optical port in the midline, suprapubic, and my right inguinal fossa five millimeter port. This is the position that I give to the patients and later on in the case I'm going to tell you why this is important because you need to leave this space for you to work because that is the angle in which your your clamps are going to go throughout the case. So once you are situated in the middle of the patient's legs you are working bottoms up. Uh, my first goal is to clear and develop further the retrorectus space that I initially came into. Uh, this is the fashion in which I most of the times do it. Uh, I like doing the first, the left retrorectus space, because it's a space that I know uh, has been previously uh, developed and it's just easy for me to, to create this space in a safe way, making sure I don't have rents in the in the peritoneum. It is important to avoid having rents early in your case because having a early pneumoperitoneum could be really frustrating. It can make the case go uh, difficult for you because it will close your space. Uh, once you develop the left retroactive space you can see how my assistant and I uh, work to to get access into that area. The assistant is of the essence in order for you to have a very good view. And you're going to go as high as you can, making sure you're at least uh, above the, the umbilical scar so that you know when you do your crossover, you're on top of the liver round ligament. Then we're going to turn our attention to the right retrorectus space and we're going to make sure that we're really hugging the right rectus because there is a chance that you may go behind the, the posterior rectus sheath uh, into the peritoneal cavity and creating an accidental pneumoperitoneum. So what you want to do in order to find your posterior rectus sheath on the right retrorectus is you want to stay very close to the rectum and do the dissection, uh, making sure that there's also not a lot of blood in your surgical field. Uh, also, while I'm doing this, it's important to mention that I always use energy when I'm dissecting towards the midline, and I try to not use energy when I'm dissecting towards the linea semilunaris, because that is where my neurovascular bundles are going to be found. And I know that I have uh, worked uh, high enough once I start to see my transversus muscle that you're seeing in the screen. Just finishing up some of the dissection close to the midline and then you can have a very nice view of the volcano sign. The two of the posterior rectus sheath coming together and the outline of the hernia defect. And this is when an important uh, first uh, trick comes into the question. Dissecting from the pelvis can be very challenging. So what I do is I turn my right hand into the port in which I initially entered the abdomen with. 
this is going to provide me with a much better angle to do my crossover on top of the round ligament. It is important to try to do the crossover on top of the round ligament because this is a more dense tissue that is going to prevent you from accidentally opening the peritoneum. And also, it is the area where the diastasis is going to be found, so you will want to make uh, your dissection really close to the fascia and be close behind the midline. So all that fat goes down and you keep your midline and your fascia always on top. It will be a very severe accident if you create a dissection in which the fascia is down because now you're leaving your two anterior rectus sheath fascia uh, separated, which will create a bulge and a hernia in this patient. So what you're going to do is stay very close to the midline, always uh, seeing the fascia and uh, very slowly dissecting the areolar tissue on top. I always work my way down from top to bottom because I know when I am working close to the top, I, I am a, in a more dense tissue when I'm working closer to the umbilical area. I will be in an area where there's a more thin peritoneum. Now we're going to turn our attention to the right retrorectus. We're going to introduce the clamp and this clamp is going to help us notice where the dissection of the other side has been done. And with the same angle, you're going to enter the right retrorectus space being sure that you are pointing out uh, where is the area where you want to do your incision in the posterior rectus sheath. And this is going to provide you with a safe entering into the uh, contralateral or the right retrorectus space. You're going to pass your clamp through the small gap that you just created. And this is going to help you make contratraction so that you can create a plane in which it will be much more easy to do the dissection of the right retrorectus space as well as preserving at least one centimeter of uh, fascia uh, within your site so that you can suture that later on in the case. Once you have worked your way close to the siphoid, you're going to start working downwards, always going from where there's safe uh, dissection to the area where you can create a peritoneal rent. And now that you have uh, done the crossover, we are going to turn our attention to the posterior rectus sheath closer to where the umbilical uh, hernia is. But now we are certain that we have achieved almost uh, the, the total uh, crossover. It is important at this point to just apply energy on the fascia. You don't want to be uh, close to the hernia sac and injuring uh, maybe bowel uh, or the peritoneum. And we just have a little bit more fascia to go and this is going to help me reduce the hernia sac so we can finally start uh, suturing the hernia defect and bringing the midline together to the center again. It is important when you are uh, reducing the hernia sac to preserve as much sac as possible because sometimes when you get some rent, this uh, sac preservation is what's going to help you close the, the posterior defects. Now, when we speak about the angles of the uh, suturing motion, it is important that from the beginning when you place your patient, the legs of the patient allow you sufficient uh, space for you to move your hands in the angles that you're going to be suturing. Therefore, uh, it is important that the patient's legs are bent to, to the uh, facing the floor and that you have all that space that you see in the image clear so that the, the range of motion of your hands 
is the way you are observing in the screen. When you're handling a needle inside of the abdomen, it's always better to grasp the needle with the tip and uh, align the needle with the needle holder from the string so then you can grab it and start placing the, the stitches. While this takes place, it is important to mention that the surgical instrument that you're using to suture should be aligned with the defect that you're trying to bring together and the needle should be perpendicular to the defect so it enters the, the edges of the defect in a more anatomical fashion, more um, easy and, and more physiological for the surgeon's hand and this will provide you with much better uh, outcomes. This, this will feel uh, more comfortable in your wrist. This is the, the, how to suture the abdominal wall or what are the, the, the tricks to suture the abdominal wall from the pelvis. It's a common question that I, that I get from other surgeons that are trying to uh, start their learning curve in Itebrius Stopa. And the truth is that uh, uh, in the beginning of, of, the, of the curve, it is difficult because it is not a position in which surgeons suture most of the time. Uh, it's like suturing backwards, uh, but within time you will develop a sense of space inside of the abdominal cavity and it will feel more, more normal. It is of the essence that the assistant gives you always a good angle because if you can't see, you can't uh, properly handle your instruments or the needle. Uh, just like in robotic surgery, after you do a few passes of the, of the needle, you're going to tighten the string so that you bring the edges of the defect and or the rectus diastasis, like in this case, together. And this will allow you to keep some of the extra string away from your surgical view. And this will be much more comfortable uh, during the procedure. Now, here's another uh, key element uh, of suturing the anterior abdominal wall. Sometimes the angles in which you're going to do it are going to feel steep, are going to feel difficult. So you can always use your left hand to project downwards the, the area that you're trying to suture in a way that you decrease the angle in which you're doing it and the motion of your wrist and the angle in which the needle is going inside of the defect feels more natural. And while you're doing this, uh, it is important to uh, project with your finger the scar of the umbilicus so you can again place the umbilicus uh, near the, the abdominal wall and it's uh, fixated and it's, uh, it's, it's strong. It doesn't look like the hernia is still there, which is precisely what's taking place in these moments of the surgery where we're putting a stitch on the angle of the umbilicus so that the umbilicus looks more natural. And this is highly appreciated, especially from the lady patients that care about the aesthetic outcome of the surgery on their abdomen. When I did this video, I wanted uh, all of the angles from the procedure to, to be able to be seen, because this is what's more uh, important, the, the, the setting in the OR and the way you, you uh, project your, your suturing from outside the abdomen. So once I'm done closing the defect, I am going to run the suture back through which, through the same uh, way that I came in. And that's the end of the case. We measure the space. I mean, take out the needle of the abdomen, put in a mesh, and this is the way the abdomen looks in the end of the procedure. 
So I hope this is helpful for uh, surgeons out there trying to start out their, their learning curve in ETEP Rips Estopa. Thank you.